Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity. In the last one, we wish. entered Gilded Vale. We, uh, found out I that be they're having some trouble with the children are being born, but not healthily. They've been born, as they say, without souls. Um, kind of troubling. Oh, forgot. I, uh, reloaded, so I need to put it back on. Do fast mode! Uh, we met Eloth, who was having an interesting time with... What's that story you told again? With the tall fellow and the wee lass. You mean the Aomawa captain and the Orden cabin boy? What? No, not... Well, hold on. Tell us that one first. Oh, low. No, I want to click on the... Last one standing by the next round. A oh, roach is scattered. Okay, flee under the crates. Um. So Eloth was having some trouble. Ooh. Not good enough. Um. Huh. Nope. I have enough lock picks. Just kidding. Yes. But we'll wait a bit. Oh right. The dog will come up with me. Dog. The wolf. The bones are covered in tiny bait parts. Okay. <coughs> the sound stares intently at the covered window, head cocked as if waiting to hear a particular sound. It looks up when you approach and whines a low note, tail wagging slightly. Sorry, girl. Don't think he's coming back. I could use a good dog. Here, girl. Pet the dog. The dog's tail thumps happily against the floorboards. <coughs> uh, sorry, girl. Don't think he's coming back. The dog whines softly again, tilting his head. <laughs> well, you can come with me. Maybe we'll find him on the way. The dog's ears perk up, trots over to you, and barks happily. I have gained Black Hound. You have had enough of the pig. We'll have a dog now. Oops. I shall be discreet. Anything to find? We can lockpick that. I I'm gonna wait. Oh, hey. More things. I want to click. Please. But I want to look at it. I don't know why I can't look at it. I don't want me to look at it for whatever reason. Okay, fine then. I won't look at it. I don't know what it is. There we go. Maybe I wasn't close enough. I don't know. But now it is time to recruit the final member of this starting party. And for that, we will run. Time to move. Come up and over here. I dare. Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. I like the fact that Aleph and Adair are both voiced by the same guy. And they happen to be the first two you pick up. Looking for anyone who could help me feel better. He gives you an understanding nod as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. Ah! Wow. That was bad. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Oh. No. No, no. Welcome to our lovely village. Oh. That's right. First you gotta do... Scattered between the roots and are bracelets of twine and bead, wilting flowers and notes, half erased by the rains. And I also want one of them I can speak to. Okay. If you click on her, or what? What is it? As you wish. Where is she? Hmm. Should be able to select her. She should show up. 
I'm rather confused. Maybe I have to talk to him again. Whatever your problem, but if you're... You're supposed to click on one of them to trigger something. Um, let me check the journal. Seek out for your condition. It's really weird. One of these... It's a major plot point. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta find her about it. Where is, where, which one is she? Hmm. I'm gonna try resting in the end. Maybe I have to do that. What first. is it? Back to the end. So similar to camping. Ends. Good day to you. So whatever room you choose to do, um, will give you bonuses. So like if I could afford Deerwood's Pride, I'd get a plus two re to resolve for the next two days. I could go to Laborer's Rest and get a plus one to Mechanics so I could actually handle some of those uh, lockpicking things a bit better. And I might do that later, but for now we'll just take the common room. It's free, but you don't get any bonuses. These sleeping scenes always somehow strike me as creepy, because it's just like you're you're peering in. Oh, okay. This is how it is triggered. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gildan's vague gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes groaning louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman, whose face has shriveled in inward like moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly her head snaps up, and her eyes open, and there are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rain today she speaks a word. Watch her. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she's truly dead. There we go. Now I can find her. Oh, and now it's night. All the better time to go sneaking around. Let's try this again. There we go. Suddenly it's very, very clear. Caldara de Baranzi. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. A bloated purple flesh over the bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other. When the breeze shifts, you perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there's a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Leave the body alone. No, that's boring. Let's go reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman perceiving all that lies beneath, between you and her with new and familiar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there's a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes, and you feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, and the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? Her eyes squint as she peers down at you. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. 
a mercy then do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Kaldara moves her tongue around in her mouth as if testing it. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, no. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! What do you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, thinning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. I think I survived a Biovac. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Kaldara appraises you with a scholarly interest for a moment before resuming her cheerful demeanor. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? She smiles sadly at a thought. You said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die, and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence, and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Who are you? 
And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What happened to you? She laughs, a rasping, choked cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling! Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer! <laughs> Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her violence. The permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Tell me. Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. What's an animancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things. But their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. I had other questions. Of course, dear. Oop, I guess I don't. Peace. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Caldara closes her eyes, and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. I was granted crucible of the soul. Aleph looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you all right? You seem lost just now. Uh, you're a wizard, hey. I'm a watcher. His arched eyebrows receding to his head. Well, that is interesting. Gives you a sly grin. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figures in the runes, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. You know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare, and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, he coughs. As you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. Need to go to Quai Noir, and I leveled up. Let's talk to Adair. Whoa. Visions and whispers. The smell of pipe smoke, at once earthy and sweet, winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair leaning against a mossy rock wall. His pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I, I think you oughta. 
What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. He looks you up and down in grimaces. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you a moment, his brow arched, his smirk broadens. Well, I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radrick at first. <laughs> Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. You think you're going to be hanged? The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. The war? Saints War. Only one in my lifetime. Fellow decided he's the living incarnation of Aethys. Overthrows Raid Saris, marches on Deerwood. So we gave him a Deerwood and hello. What's a Deerwood and hello? We blew him up. He smiles at this, but is a smile of one recounting a joke for effect rather than a dreamant. Who is Aethys? God of rebirth and redemption, formally, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different where you're from. Got other questions? I got time. Why was your headman hanged? Got involved. Radrick sent men down here the other day, so they had it on good authority someone in town was working with Kolsk, plotting Radrick's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Swithin, that's my headband, he sets up and says it's him. They took him at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, if not for plotting against Radrick, then for protecting me. What does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there owns a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Radric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. I can you can see why I was eager to leave. Aleth glances at you and lowers his voice. Who's Kolsk? Someone who got tired of all the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. If you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. Just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wadewin's legacy started with Wadewin. We could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Quai Noir. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. 
Something kindles in Adair's eyes, and the vigor of purpose finds its way into his voice. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger, and a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. There's a fine reason if I ever had one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. He glanced briefly at the tree. He tilts his head forward and gives you a pointed look. Let's get going. And now we have a dare. He is a fighter. He has sword and board right now, it seems. That is a saber with a medium shield. He might change that up later. Actually, I think he ends up with a shield with the plan. Uh, there are some special weapons and such later, so I kind of try to plan ahead to make sure that I have uh, all the people planned so that I don't end up having a weapon without someone to use it. Um, and that way so I can I can plan some of those traits, the talents as it were, up to up to that point. And he actually that that'll suit him quite well. But let's take a look at him his character sheet. Athletics comes from being a fighter and a farmer. Lore from a fighter, I'm not sure why a fighter once scrolls, but sure. And survival fighter and farmer. Got good might and constitution, very much a frontliner, uh, as I am at the moment. Decent perception and uh, resolve. I don't know why I forgot that for a second. Diplomatic and rational, I need diplomatic and honest. I don't think I've had too many honest ones so far, so. But it's time to level. Let's start with myself. That's going to you at level 3. I'm already at level 3. I'm going to continue to pump up my lore. So I no longer have enough points to continue to pump up lore. The only... I mean, second one is great, but each point's only another five, so it's kind of okay. But I'm going to keep these to uh, save for the next one. So I have Flames of Devotion. Zealous Focus. So modal, you can turn them on or off. Um, so this turns graces into hits. I can move speed or defense while disengaging. I don't ever do that. Damage reduction and hits to grazes. I'm going to go with grazes and hits. I'm slow, so I want to make sure when I hit, I hit. So the accuracy in this should help on that. I do also want this, though, so I might pick that up at 5. I might pick it up now. Let's go ahead and pick this up. So you don't get a talent at this level. So it's very good at lore. I should keep him going that way. And now we get second level spells. So build a little dream spectacle. We can confuse them. We can get them stuck. Oh, you get to choose two. So combusting wounds when dealt damage. So if we wound them there they get a DOT holding fire ray of fire merciless gaze and that's the one with the caster so I don't want that. Fuse with vital essence and I can get fifty health at a caress becomes paralyzed. Sure, we'll grab this. And Adair should be level huh? three. And I think Jay Stank is still level one. Hey. So we'll actually turn him into our mechanics guy, I think. Doesn't start with any bonus to it, but um I don't really need more than two survival or two athletics probably. I'm not going to stealth, so may as well make him our mechanic. We'll probably actually have him and another person um, in case we swap him out. But So you can knock down more often. We haven't gotten to see it, but you knock them down. They go prone, which makes it a lot easier to hit them. Rapid recovery. So I think it just... Oh, constant recovery. 
So I think this is just you constantly have a better healing. Some nice things about the fighter, you whereas others you have the I thought that was so maybe you have to get the weapon focus first. Um they have extra ones beyond this. Oh uh, no, it's uh, it's later on. You don't get them yet. Uh, you can instead of just having more accuracy, you can also get more damage. So let's grab rapid recovery. It's always good to be healthy. Okay, now we're level three. Continue on. We got four mechanics. So you can go with defender. So plus two enemies engaged. So you're easier to hit, but they can't get past you, which is always good. Confident aim. Um. Increasing the minimum damage for melee weapons. Discipline barrage. Want that or guardian stance. Hmm, it's actually interesting. So hit, it's harder for him to hit, but it's harder for everyone else to hit. I think I'm going to go. I'm gonna grab. I'm stuck. I'm torn between these two. I'm gonna grab this one. But that will be the end of this episode. Once we actually, first of all, put us into formation. Nope, that's pretty close to what I would want. Actually, I want the wolf up here. So this will be our formation. And the next episode, we will go and try and collect the rest of the quests. And I think we can actually pick some of those locks now up in the end. So let's uh, we'll investigate that as well. And then uh, we will set off. I'm not going to go to Kenwa yet. It's a fun place. I really like it. But... There's uh, a bit of leveling that I want to do before I get out there, so be a bit of time before we check that out. But I hope you'll join me in the next episode.